All right. Northern Bridgehead. Valhalla! Yes, we are entering the eternal battlefield. Right. We've played on this beforehand, but I think you this is a new orientation. Maybe. Operations. Probably. Probably not. Probably played this before, because there are command- well... It's actually asymmetrical, because there's one command center on one side and one military base on the other side as well. So, I'm pretty sure I've played on this map before, but probably not this orientation. Maybe. But if I have, I'm stupid. So, moving on. Little bit of frame rate stuttering there, but let's see here. Okay, so we got a base Pilot, right on our left. Let's go. So let's go that away. As you can see here, I'm already kind of forced up above my optimum altitude by most of these map spawns. Altitude is still an advantage, even if you have to go above your, uh, well, your optimal one. Because, you know, if you're- if someone's above you and you can't get to them, they still have an advantage, no matter if they're a flying brick or not. Uh-oh. Ah! God damn it! Okay, so the bots at Tier 7 apparently don't know how to fucking roll. Ow! But like I was saying, being above somebody in air combat is still a pretty decisive roll. Or rather, decisive advantage. However... It seems like the optimum altitude and the optimum airspeed are the things that are put in there to kind of cap that advantage. I'm not sure how effective they are all that that much, because honestly, half the time, I don't notice. But I'm above uh, my optimum altitude here and um, kind of struggling a little bit for speed. So you do take a hit maneuverability and speed above your optimum altitude. But um, I'm not exactly sure how effective it is, really, because it just feels like I just kind of brute force my way up here and it's all fine. Planes that have a higher optimum altitude have an advantage, obviously, but again, I'm not really sure how much of an advantage that really is, aside from the planes that are heavy fighters that already have a climb rate advantage in general. Because that's what heavy fighters actually have. They have positional authority, or altitude authority. They can basically choose where the hell they're going to be in an engagement beforehand, where fighters are kind of... It takes a while for a fighter to actually get to a different altitude if it wants to go there. Or at least slightly longer, longer, longer not to be competitive with the heavy fighter. The heavy fighter's advantage is that it can run, but it can also dictate altitude. Fighters have a maneuverability advantage, well, in the fights. I don't, I don't necessarily think I like heavy fighters just on that advantage. They are, they do have a lot of guns, honestly, but I don't think I necessarily like the advantage of, oh, I get to fly around really you know, really, really fast and really, really high, but whenever I get into a fight, I'm, I'm shit at it most of the time. This is kind of the problem I have with the Premium Corsair, even though that's not a heavy fighter, but it's a fighter exhibiting heavy fighter traits, if you get me. It also has shit guns, and most heavy fighters are considerably better armed than that Corsair. Like, for example, the Bowfighter. That was a weird-ass turn. Sorry about that, sloppy airmanship. So, I don't think I'm- I don't really think I'm an amazing fan of heavy fighters yet, but there are some that I do want. Like, for example, the Flapjack. Because it's the fucking Flapjack. Why wouldn't you want to fly that around? It's kind of a shame that the Flapjack doesn't have 37mm cannons. It can't be the Chain Lightning. But, it's still res respectively well-armed and has comical maneuverability for what it is. And I'm expecting it to be very durable as well, because that's a... That's a historically stated fact, that the, the prototypes were actually incredibly durable because of the way they were designed, so much so that they had to use a wrecking ball to dismantle it after they junked it. This is something made out of aluminum and designed to fly. I burned and exploded, but you get my point. If you need to use a wrecking ball to dismantle something made out of aluminum and designed to fly through the air, it's pretty durable. Especially if it was designed during World War II. Okay, so we're back in after our first death. We have 2,000 combat points. We're not the top of our team, but we have chevrons. The enemy team is outscoring us, though. We gotta stop that. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta put this down. Like I said, I'm not really have- I don't feel like I have as much power as I did with the- Well, with a large cannon to one-hit enemies as I did with the Yak-9. It's... 
it, it's it's speed and efficiency in that regard. Whereas I can knock out one target really quickly and then move on to the next one really quickly and then clear out areas by myself. As you saw several times while I was playing the damn Yak-9, I basically cleared out points on my own. Because I was able to come in, one-shot all the defense aircraft, and then... Well, if I had teammates there, it was kind of irrelevant. Uh-oh, fascist plane, but, uh... Thank you! Fascist! There's something on my left, but it looks like he fucked off. Oh! I got shot down by another fascist plane! Oh, no! Well, at least I killed the one fascist plane that I was shooting at. Looks like our bomber formations are getting through, though, so we're probably gonna capture this point. Doesn't look like anybody's really over here. That military base, though, is, uh... Hey! Military base. Take action. How about that? We've taken control of the airfield. Right there, just by my little bit of handiwork, my me dying didn't really help us out all that much, but uh, my handiwork here helped us get a central central spawn point. So now we can jump in and kill the people who were just murdering us. Let's see if we can find them. Are they above us? Well, there's one right there. Hoygen! Get back here, Hoygen! Oh. Jay Yunkers just seem so... They have a 50 millimeter cannon good for ground attack, but that's the AI being terrible in placement, but the Yunkers are just flying coffins. They're so easy to hit, and they don't really feel like they have all that much hit points. They have it, because they're a ground attack plane, they have the most hit points in the fucking game, but it's just like, it's not hard to deal damage to them, so the hit points are just kind of irrelevant, really. Because their hit point advantage is so easily eaten up because literally anything can sit on their ass and shoot them full of holes. And that, and in addition, their gunner defense armament doesn't really seem to be all that threatening, if at all. Probably better if a player is using it, but still, you get my point. And there goes another Yonkers. This I don't really like. Usually when I play a game, I do tend towards the slower, more durable things because in some cases I do like to fucking relax while I'm playing games and playing shit that is like, for example, the Hellcat in World of Tanks. Something that's really fast with no armor and it's always on the 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 bleeding edge, the danger zone a heavy storm here. of doing shit. Do you Kinda gets on my nerves sometimes and also exhausts the ever-loving shit out of me. So I like a tank. You know, the kind of tank that, you know, has come to mean it- as it's come to mean in video games. Something that has a lot of hit points, or a lot of durability in general, that it gives you time to react to certain situations. However, unfortunately, in World of Tanks, they don't really seem to like to make these fucking vehicles, because everyone goddamn complains if they can't gold- shoot a gold round right through the front. That may be changing, though! I'm not holding my fucking breath for it, but I'll- I'll be around for it. But, looking at the Yunkers, that's exactly the situation that I don't want to be in. It's a thing that's supposed to be durable. It is durable! It's hard to chew through. It's got a lot of hit points. The only problem is, there's no challenge to actually getting rid of those hit points. So, honestly, they go faster than something that doesn't have that much hit points that has other advantages like maneuverability. Because rolling a lot makes you harder to hit, so you effectively increase your amount of hit points. A speed tank, if you will. Though this isn't that kind of game, or at least I don't think it is. But... In this situation... Roll! Roll off, motherfucker! Roll! <laughs> he didn't roll. But he died anyway. Okay, the bots are really determined now. I, I think the bots have lost their roll... Their roll off of head-on... Um... Directives. I think they're advancing, and also somewhat degrading their safety protocols. They're evolving. It's it's actually terrifying to see this. First they they gained human human emotions and human idiosyncrasies and human traits. And now they're abandoning them because they know they're immortal machines. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. What you see here 
His rear guns aren't really gonna dissuade me. The only thing that's gonna dissuade me is my my guns overheating. He's shooting at me, and he's doing damage, it's just not a whole lot. Someone else even murdered him there. Whoa! Wall. Okay, don't wanna do that. Almost all enemy aircraft are destroyed. Is that a bomber? Yeah, it's a bomber. The last one's a bomber all the way the fuck up there. Let's climb! Oh. Well, or not. We'll be waiting I had a Japanese plane on my wing, I was wondering which one was there. But yeah, 7,000 points. Again, not the most amazing game because I'm flying around here talking bullshit, but... Yeah, you can see where I'm kind of suffering. But back to hangar, let's go. Okay, oh, look at that, we did get 4,000 XP, how about that? <laughs> was it enough to get the gun though? I think it might be enough to get the gun, I'm not sure. Right. Wrong fucking button! God, this game has way too many fucking buttons. It is! Good. So now we get a very, very large increase in DPM with this. Or should, right? right uh, no, I haven't equipped it yet. My bad. Okay, so now we have 274 DPM all the way out to 660 meters. That's a very large increase. I like that. So, now what we're gonna do... So we're gonna start to grind for the cannons, because, well, um, there's nothing really in the way. Well, there's really, there's nothing else that we could really get to make this plane any better than it is right now in terms of, well, maneuverability. Aside from, aside from the airframe, but that only gives us, like, that only gives us one tick off of our turn time, which is not actual turn time, but generally, it, if you look at that, that's not re even really making a big impact. It's really not gonna make a really big impact on anything else, even if you can't see the statistics. Hopefully. Usually. Again, there's a lot of mysterious shit in this game that we don't know about. So, it doesn't look like that big of a deal. Same deal with the last engine. We're probably gonna grab all of those. But what we need to do now, is we need to increase the firepower. We need to bring back the Soviet Blap Machine. The Bliat Cannon, yes. At some point. And, well, for comparison. What's this? How does this shape up with this gun? Because I think it might be... No, it's not the same gun. Actually, it is the same gun. It's the same designation and everything. But, alright. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. NS-45M. Modernized. Right. Okay, so what's the difference here? It does actually do more damage. It has slightly higher alpha damage, but it has the same range. So it's got slightly higher alpha damage to compensate that we're shooting at planes that are more durable. So it's just, it's just kind of, it should, in effect, feel the same. Which is good, because I like that. I liked what we were doing. And also, well, actually, no. Right, this is the Yak-9. Yak-9, Yak-9U. I'm gonna get over that eventually. But, yes, this, I was wondering why there wasn't any equipment here, because I took it off. Duh. It's not the plane we're looking for. Right. So there's that. The, um, I could use reflector sights on this, honestly, but honestly, it, uh, as people have noticed, the, turning up the A, the AA is, the AA's damage is actually very, very noticeable. multi war fighters get a, a hit point boost and a durability boost from AA, or like, from being damaged by AA, but, um, I think concealing livery is doing perfectly fine, considering that I don't have all of my hit points suddenly shaved off while I'm trying to fight in the middle of everything, except when something rams me, or I ram it. But that's, that's, that's optional. We can avoid that. A, we kind of just have to fly through. But, we've got the cannons, so let's see what kind of increase we can get at short range. Okay, Alpine Gambit. Another game that we, I've played on at least with the XP-75. So, no new maps Attention. yet. You are entering the mainly because I've played Tier 7. But, luck. These maps are starting to creep down as we get into Tier 7 games with the Tier 6 vehicles. So we've seen them all. We haven't seen the jet-specific maps yet. I'm wondering what those are. But let's see what the nose full of cannons now can do. Because I remember, um... I remember this, uh, actually no, it wasn't the Yak-9U. But it was the Yak-3P, I believe, has this sort of armament for cannons in the nose. As well as basically being able to outfit literally any other combination of Get cannons on the Yakala fighters, Let's go. including the 45s and the 37s. But the triple nose mounted 20mm cannons were f by far probably the most deadly combination, if I remember correctly, or at least the ones that I hated the most. 
Then again, I usually played Russian dive bombers, Russian bombers, or Russian attack aircraft, so, um, I didn't have to deal with these things, but every fucking time I want to play something else, Yak-3Ps. And literally everything else. Yak-9Ts, Yak-9Ks. Holy fucking shit, they made my life hell. Okay, so, two-player 410s, so let's see what we can do with these things. Uh, first shot, lots of sparkles, no damage, thanks. Okay, that seems to be effective, however, we overheated all of our guns. Okay, gotta watch the temp on these things, but they seem like they do uh, an acceptable amount of damage. Alright, things that are threats. This thing. Okay, alright, that's a good step up in damage. I'm liking this. This is kind of what I want if I was going to play a, uh, a regular fighter based around cannon armament. This is kind of the same DPM that I'd want. Hi, guys! Getting really crowded down here. Excuse me, coming through. Paul! Okay, turn it around here, turn it around. Get the Yunkers because he doesn't have that much health and he's easier to hit. The military Done. base is under our control. Get ready to support the attack. Slow down. Whoa, wreck. Good thing those don't collide with me. Damn it, IL! Sturmovic! Slow! Well, actually, increase speed! Increase to a more manageable slow! Alright, fine. Roll off the top and come back at him. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, so it's not. Th this is probably the. Yeah, I made the good choice here. This is. It's still not fucking. Uh, Cannon rape, but it's still pretty good. I think this is acceptable or on par with anything that I'd want to actually use in terms of in terms of like 20 millimeter cannon armament, this kind of caliber range. This is the kind of damage that I'd want. But there are probably planes that have more damage than this in terms of like 20 millimeter armaments. But this is acceptable to me. A rocket has reached the target. Enemy so, damaged. It would seem that the stock grind in the Yak-9U isn't actually that bad, even if the aircraft itself it doesn't really seem all that shockingly amazing. It's just kinda... it's the Yak-9, but slightly better. But in being slightly better, it also has a, has a slightly better stock grind as well. So at least there's that. Don't want to slam into the Yunkoners. Oh, he stole my kill, the bastard. Hey, step, step on, please. Thank you. This is not the circus. We are trying to win a war. Okay, that's my kill. Thank you. See, step on, step on is he's going to he's going to join the circus. He's going to be clown like that song Leningrad. Alright, so, we're just chewing at bots here, but, um, well, the points are rolling in. I kind of, I'm kind of, now I'm kind of becoming aware of, uh, whatchamacallit, me sitting here getting all these points and going like, it's not that good, as I continually outscore my entire team. It's, you know, it's acceptable. Millions and millions of points and dollars. Yo, it's not, you, you can live without it. I'm becoming the people that I hate. The people who say, say say things like this with relationships, where if the relationship isn't that great, it's just, you know, an immense level of happiness in your life. You can live without it, though. You don't need it. I hate these people. 
Why? Because they had it, and they're spoiled, and they're jaded, and they... It makes them ignorant towards, well, people who haven't had it. Like me. But enough personal shit. I... Well, I did get the Yonkers, good. Boy, these Yonkers just keep flying in. My goodness. Ten thousand points! Wow, we're... We're zipping along here, it's still six minutes into the fucking game. Boy, all of these... All these ground attack planes that keep just... Flying into the center and dying horribly! I feel like my fangs are out. I'm kind of bloodthirsty, so I want to fly over to that big ball over there and shoot stuff. But you know, it's probably better if I stick around here. We're winning, we've got this, there are enough planes over there, they don't need me dying, I'm already damaged. Well, there's a squall line. Support will not be available. Hmm. Okay. Now it seems like we're gonna have reinforcements over here, so I better be, uh, I better be actually, um, prepared to smash myself into the ground right about now, or get myself killed. One of the two. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to chew through that, that Yonkers, though. Eh, fuck it, not enough time. Um, nobody saw this. And then Fonto walked all the way back to the airbase, and, um, uh, met his, uh, met his, uh, his commissar and told him, no I lost my plane. You You're on your own. And the commissar asked, how did you lose your plane? And he says, I was shot down, it was accident, there was nothing I could do. So give me new plane, so that I can get in before the storm comes here. And so, Amazed by... Amazed by Fanto's amazing... and staunch... desire to fight. The Commissar gave him the first plane off of the airfield and told him to go fight before... before Horror Kane come in. And that is how Fanto cheated the system and why the Squall Rhine deaths are still stupid. Keep it up! Victory is almost ours. It breeds dishonesty and heroism. And dishonesty is the enemy of heroism, damn it. We have complete control of the skies. But there really is no reason not to do it. You're not penalized in any other capacity. But, well, it looks like 11,000 points are all I'm walking away with because we won the game. I got one more kill under my belt for that. How about that? Okay, so we got a lot of things done. We didn't get, uh, didn't get, uh, above 14,000, but again, this is still mostly a stock plane. So upgrading the 20 millimeter cannons is, um, it's a good idea. Y you should, you should, that, that's pretty much probably the best way of going about this. Upgrade the nose-mounted cannons first. And then get the bigger nose-mounted cannons. But, uh, yeah, that gives you acceptable DPM to truck through this. But, that the hangar. Okay, so, another bunch of medals for my chest here. We didn't get all of our chevrons, but, uh, well, we only captured one point. We're busy chewing on the entire enemy's ground attack force for the entire game. We basically outscored literally everyone in the game, though. So, uh, at least we spent our time well with that one. But, what do we get? All right, 3,000. Not an amazing amount, but still better than what we were cruising at beforehand, because we were getting about, yeah, we were getting somewhere around 2,000 for those kinds of victories, and now we get slightly more. I didn't want to employ premium time all that much in this grindfest, but, um, well, quite honestly, as we start to get up to tier 7, to 8, to 9, to 10, the grind is going to take significantly longer, even if the numbers kind of increase a little bit. So, this may be the time where I actually do use premium to get through this in a timely fashion. Because you all seem to very much like me playing World of the Warplanes, but I don't think you want to see me playing the same plane for, uh, several, like, like, 25 episodes for each plane. I'm making good progress so far, I think, but, well, you guys want to see something new, you know, once in a while, freshen up the place, keeps everybody interested. But, you all have, um, you all have kind words to say to me while I'm, uh, playing the game, honestly. Some of you want to inform me about certain things, but uh, honestly, 
playing this game, I get a lot less morons try in my YouTube comments trying to tell me I'm shit at the video game. And also, every time I come into my garage, or my hangar, I have like four or five different PMs about people telling me like how they enjoy my videos, and how they enjoy watching my videos, and how I'm doing a good job, Now I'm good at the video game. That's nice. That, that really is nice. But, well, let's see, where are we now? Okay, so, we need 2,000 in order to get the VYA. Again, not the most amazing upgrade in the history of everything, but a slight DPM increase, that should, uh, hmm. That'll actually, as we see here, that'll bring us up to 300 DPM at 700 meters. And also, a slightly higher range, because it does actually give us slightly higher range than what we have. So, 740 meters. So, 110 poking out there, and then 300, you know, 300 as we were... At, at our optimal range currently, or actually slightly higher than our optimal range. So, well, that's a bit better. It's a slow, kind of a slow increase, but then we come up to here and then we have, uh, you know, the hilarious damage at hilarious ranges. So it's 100 and, 190 at 700 meters. Oh, well, that's because the ranges overlap. Right. And also, this 37, at, the range is actually not that great on this 37. It's only 600. It's actually less than the 20... Three. That's strange. They nerfed it? Going from tier to tier? I remember it having like six to eight hundred range for the X7. So what's going on here? But whatever, we'll figure that out when we get to it. We still have a we still have a large chunk of damage to throw at it. I know the 211 has 37 millimeter cannons that aren't that great for three of its for two of its three uh, uh, armament options. Only the last one actually feels like the 37s that we've been using. Rather the 37s to 45s that we've been using. But you do get three of them. But, anyway. Enough yakking. Does this tally up exactly what we need? We need 44... Yes, it does. That's actually very convenient. We need 44 fucking thousand XP in order to get to the 45. You know, it's nice to see that all kind of calculated right in front of me so I don't have to think. But, uh, that's still a really, really large fucking number. I don't like that. But, well, as we've established, the Yak-9U is... It's... It's okay. It's... It's alright. It's not the most amazing plane that I ever played, but, well, at least the stock Rhine isn't... terrible. So... Speaking of that stock Rhine... Attention! You are entering the zone controlled by the enemy. All right, Alpine Gambit again. Mostly all centered around a military base, huh? All right. There's gonna be plenty of fighting going around here. Okay, so, looks like we're going to take the left garrison first, but the right garrison is about equal distance, but you are approaching let's go this line. way! Off we go. Also seems like the boost is longer on this, if I, uh, yeah, it's about 10 seconds. The boost in the Act 9 was 6 seconds, if I remember correctly? So we get a longer boost as well. How about that? Something I didn't immediately notice, but nice to have. Uh, <clears throat> suicidal bots. Get the fuck back. Alright, fine. You know what? I'll use the reinforced control surface. Because I want to kill. I want to kill you. It already takes fucking forever to do that. Well, no more kills for me. Because I don't have range. Ah. Okay, so what's going on in the center here? Looks like a lot of things. Explosions, planes on the minimap, gunfire. Sounds like a pretty happening joint. A large enemy force is attacking the military base. Proceed with caution. Alright, so we got a bunch of fighters diving in here to fuck with us. But the ground attack planes are all running around. So we'll see if we can poke out. Well, I got that guy. Ha ha! 
just by clicking at him, just passive aggressively, just non-committantly clicking. See if I can get up to this P51 before he outstretches my altitude. No, he is fucking gone. Wait, oh, oh. looks like I got bigger problems to deal with here. But where's the P51? Okay, there he is. He's also a player. Jesus Christ. Hmm. Texan kaiju tick. Well, howdy, y'all. I live in Texas too. I got me one of them Russian planes, though. FP-51's nice, though. Alright, there's that. I'm being riddled by fucking soda cans, though. Oh boy, that hurts. And another one of them Mustangs. Boy, they must have had a sale on them. Got him. I'm surrounded by enemies. I'm probably going to die here. Yeah, yeah, I'm dead. Right about there. Yeah, um, my teammates all died. I was fighting, but, um, well, um, I, I was the last one to lose. Okay, so, it seems like our team is somewhat reforming. Somewhat, kind of, a little bit. Around going here? Going here. Maybe. However, we're losing the territory war. So, what that means is we gotta break away from the center point. The military base is very, very valuable and very, very powerful. The only problem is if um, we can't hold it because there are too many fucking dudes there, it's kind of a useless waste of resources. But it seems like, actually, we might be able to form up in there and kill enough people to get through this, because it seems like everybody's just kind of mindlessly flying into the military base. So, you know what? While they're expending so many fucking planes, might as well go in there and make sure that we win. It looks like we're actually very close, too. We only need to have one more kill. But where is that kill, says Fonto? Where? Is it here? Well, it's it was it was out there somewhere. Oh, hello, P-38. Goodbye, P-38. Ow. God damn that Mustang. I got indecisive of what target I was going to be shooting at. Well, at least we have the military base now. The only problem is we need to capture everything else or we're going to lose. That's a fucking British Mustang, too. He has Hispanos. He has good Hispanos. Oh, well. We'll respawn. We lost our first fucking control point to the enemy. Are you... are you... God damn it. One of those times where I can't rely on my team for anything, and the more players that we have on my team, the less likely it is that we're going to win. Okay, so you know what? We need to go back... we need to go back, Captain. First thing we need to do is get this shit back under control. Who's this fucker? It is a... Yeah, fuck up, Wolf A. Not that threatening, but you know what? You just get, get it, get the fuck out of our spawn. Just get out. Be gone, fascist. We're losing the military base again without actually really affecting any of the other points. Because all of the enemy are just swamping in it. We need to control the outer rim points in order to win this. Boy, look at all those fucking sparkles! The enemy has taken over our military base. Show them who's boss. All right, there's that. All right, so we're gonna go around the rim here. They've got an advantage in tickets right now, but it's a slight advantage. The military base, you know, not having any, uh, well, not not being ours anymore and not having any real way of attacking it is kind of bad. But if we go around capture all the other points before they can actually re the really react, we should be alright. Should be alright. Maybe. It we could be too late, forward, but I'm gonna keep fighting anyway.
He f get the fuck back in the point so you count. You fucking schmuck. Fine, fuck you, P-38. I'll go shoot at the light aircraft. I don't need your fucking ass. I don't want to get smashed in the we face by that P-38. However, I hear... I now feel the other air defense aircraft looking at me with very, very angry eyes. However, they've kind of, they've kind of fucked off, though. Seems back on the radar. Cool down the guns! And the P-38 has escaped. God damn it. All positions are captured by the enemy. You must turn the tide of the battle. If my team does they literally nothing, I cannot save them. Yeah, too little too late on that one. If my team does literally nothing to stave off the enemy's capture points, I can't do anything. You really, you don't have enough time. And if the enemy gets all formed up together into a big kill ball, and then nobody really goes off to stop them... You see, this is the kind of thing. I need to be either attacking the enemy and keeping them suppressed, or I need to be capturing points. The only problem is, when I do one of these jobs, my team has to- I have to rely on my team to take the other one. And more than often, they're terrible at it. So... Either way, in most situations, I'm gonna fail one job. And this may or may not cost us the entire game. If I can just kill all of them really quickly, that maybe, maybe, maybe that be able to equalize things. It's kind of what's happening at the lower tiers. But you see what I mean. You get to the point where you are taking one job up completely and it's taking up all of your time. You're carrying to your maximum effectiveness. Yet your team still fucking lets you down. There's really nothing you could do at that point. It's fucking frustrating and annoying, because I have a grind here, I've got bills to pay. I got a livelihood to, you know, to keep going here. I get paid by commission, damn it. But you get to the point where y you can't do anything about it. Because people weren't just, were just not playing the game hard enough. That helps, though. You see? That's what I like. Thank you, Bane Tank. That was the P-38 that I shot. Good on you. At least the enemy can be somewhat more accommodating in the, uh, well, the situation. My team, on the other hand, well, uh, I didn't score all that much, but uh, I was just kind of trying to figure out exactly what the hell I should do to save my team, and I didn't come up with an answer quick enough. But again, it's 12 people, mostly bots, but this was, there are five people on each team. Five actual players on each team. It shouldn't fall to just me, but oftentimes, Kinda does. That makes you, makes you wonder exactly what the hell's really going on here. Like, exactly what's really the point of trying here when you get teammates that aren't really trying all that much. Yeah, I know, video games are for relaxing, and winning isn't everything, but a lot of times, you just... You just... You're off step with people, you're out of sync. To whereas you wanna play and you wanna win, and then you have the people who are... they just don't care. And like, that's not a, that's not a bad attitude to go into a game with. But, the fact of the matter is, you get placed with those people, you lose when you wanted to win, you frustrate your fucking self, and there's really no way to really fix it. And additionally, even more out of step, you wanted to win, and you're fighting people who are actually also want to win. And because you don't have the people who also want to win on your team, you lose, because there are more of them. Really isn't much you could do. So... I suppose that's the, the general crux of team play games, or not team play games at this point, where you can't really rely on anyone to... It's a surprise when you get somebody who's actually on the ball. Most of the time, it's a nice surprise. But it's not the norm. Which is... Both a blessing and a curse in some cases. Because, well... In a lot of cases, you want to fight enemies that aren't the most skilled things in the universe. Some people will say, will we'll, we'll, we'll contest it out loud where it's like, oh, if I fight morons all day, I'll just get bored. That's not appealing. You like killing people and blowing things up in video games. You like achieving things. You like winning. So what you want to fight is someone you can almost... So you can subconsciously guarantee a win against. Even if it's not determined outright. You want to win. You don't want to go in with a situation where it's like, well, I might lose. 
you might say that to feel fair, but honestly, a lot of people, I don't think they really are, when they talk about that kind of thing, I don't think they're being entirely honest. Because when you lose, it still sucks. There's nothing that really makes that better. So people don't want to lose. People don't go into situations wanting to lose. Unless that's your thing. Not judging there. But if that's your fetish, perfectly fine. But I'm talking about the people who's, who go on about skill and accomplishment in video games. Those people, honestly, I think they're talking out of their ass half the time. Because, yeah, being a good competitor is nice. Being a good competitor is, you know, it's a nice thing to have. Like that guy. You know, Bane Tank over there. Shot him down once. We were on opposite teams. We lost because my team caved in. But he still says, you know, has enough time to notice who I am. And say, hey, nice videos. Good game. That's, a, that's good. That's what you want. But in most situations, a lot of times, you just get people who are comically salty. Maybe I'm somewhat getting around that because uh, I'm a YouTuber, maybe? Because people start to know me a little bit? Because it seems like I'm making a bigger impact in this game. At least on a ground level. People do notice me, and it's a lot of people. It's not like filling up my entire bar with, you know, PMs that I can't actually, like, see anything. But, you know, people are starting to notice, notice me more and more. But the thing is that, uh, well, it just transfers to my YouTube comments, really. All the negative salt. So I don't really escape it. But like I said, negative salt for this game is being, eh, pretty much non-existent, not there. And I know people are like, people come, someone, they come and ask me, it's like, you get negative comments on YouTube, Fonto? Why? Well, I, I didn't notice any. Well, that's because you're not looking at every comment on every video every day, which is what I have in my, in, in the, the homepage or the creator page for YouTube. I see all of them. And it only takes one to really kind of just make me go, ah. <sighs> Shouldn't have read that today. I've got a lot of things to do. I don't need that. That's what I'm trying to get around, but yeah. They're there. You just have to be looking at everything. And most people don't really look at anything. Most people who watch my YouTube videos, they just, they come onto YouTube to watch my videos. They watch one or two videos, maybe, depending on what's going on. And that's it. They're really, most of the time, they don't even, they don't even look at the comments. Why? Because you have to scroll down to see them. So, um, yeah. It's not as, uh, if you see the whole picture, it's not as great as it wants to, you know, you know, as it appears, or as, you know, sort of harmonious and calm as it appears. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes bad things happen. But getting back to the original point there, um, really, a lot of times, you want to play a video game to win, which means that you want a challenge, but you want a challenge that you, you can overcome, which means that you want to win. So, you're kind of disguising it with some sort of sense of narcissism, I believe. That, oh, it's a big challenge, therefore if I accomplish it, I'll, I'll be... I'll, 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 like, the respect that I gain from it, or the accomplishment generally. Even if it's not narcissism, even if it's not directed at a third party or the people watching. Even if it's like, oh, I'll feel better if the accomplishment is harder, therefore I feel like I really earned something. You want to, you still want to win the accomplishment, though. It's still biased towards one side. If you fuck up the accomplishment over and over again, if you don't succeed, you're gonna get angry and you're gonna get pissed off eventually. So that means it's not equal. The situation, the out, you're, you, you want to win. So, really, the situation, the people who play passively are either people that are lying, that are keeping it contained, or in my opinion, people that just don't care. And that's kind of, that's kind of annoying. When you see people who are supposedly good at the game, and then, you know, they don't really give a shit about what happens. Or just seeing, not even someone who's good at the game, anybody, anybody talking about any game that you play, just playing the game and seeming just kind of, like, disconnected. That's kind of annoying. But, then, you know, I do that a lot myself, honestly, with a lot of things, because I'm not that well informed on a lot of other things. I try to get informed, and I like to think I'm more informed than I actually wind up being. But, you know, I try. I try to be at, try to find the pulse of the video game. But I've been talking way too much. So let's go back to actually playing the game. Because there's been a lot of rambling this, this recording session, I think. But, like I said, when you play a video game, you're in there to win. Unless you're playing a single player campaign or something like that, an isolated experience, and then you're there to experience something. When it's a competitive game against people, you never want to lose. So, think about that when you hear somebody, or you start to you start to hear yourself saying, "It's like, oh, well, a challenge is good." What are you really after? You're not really after the the hard. You're really you're after the sense of satisfaction after beating something you perceive as hard. But if you were going to win the entire time, 
Wasn't all that hard, was it? Enough philosophical notes from me, though. Let's keep going. 